Hey everybody, this is Tom at Talon Guitar Works, and I'm a repair facility in Southwest Florida, and one of our subscribers asked, for an emergency, I need to know how to wire a varitone rotary switch that appeared in Lucille BB King's guitar and the ES-345. So, when we look at the rotary switch, the first thing you have to do is get the right one. And this one is a six-way rotary switch, and if you look where I'm touching here, there's a lug right here, and there's a lug across from it. This is the one you want. You want the two lug model. The outer lugs are where your capacitors are gonna go, right? And this inner lug on this side is gonna come from your volume output that would normally go to your output jack, and that's where it's gonna stop. Now, the, the switch is split right down the middle. However, it's kind of off-center. One, two, three, four, five, and six are the way it works out. Use your multimeter with continuity tester to check exactly what you got in each position. These switches are very positive with the detent. They're not easy to turn. You're gonna need a chicken head knob on here with a set screw to hold it in place. A normal uh, tone pot knob that goes on these splines is not going to get it. You're going to strip that sucker out really fast. Now, if you get the screw on uh, chicken head knob, they make a brass sleeve that goes over these splines and that will protect this split in the shaft from collapsing on itself and breaking. So, there you have that part of it. Now, uh, when you wire these in, you're going to have the capacitors coming around this outer ring. Now, we're going to bring the capacitors in. Make sure you get a really good diagram on what your capacitors look like, because you're going to need lots of room in your control cavity to put this bad boy in. This is a .033 cap. This is also a .033 cap. You need to get the smallest caps you can. You don't want to go with the big sprigs and all that stuff for the values that you're looking for. So now's a good time to stop and talk about values. Now, the original Varitone circuit from Gibson had a 3300 picofarad cap in the Second position, the first position was true bypass, no cap. The second position, 3300, only cut the high frequencies. The next position was 6800 picofarads, and it did the same as the 33, just a little bit more. Now, after that, we have our normal guitar caps, 0 0.014, 0 0.022, 0 0.033, and over time, I found that this is the best cap working with musicians for distortion circuits. It, it just livens them right up. And then the point zero four seven, which is the darkest of the circuits when you're talking about six string guitars and, and normal pickup ranges. I'm not talking about, you know, 22 K pickups or anything like that. All right. Now Gibson how, held a little secret from you guys. What they had running out of this, because we have output coming in, and then we have this going out, right? We've got our caps wired in. Now the positive leg of the cap, or the leg that you deem as positive, is gonna get soldered on here. Now an important soldering tip is, you have to have a heat sink on a capacitor when you solder it. Otherwise, you could burn the capacitor out, and then your tone pot is going to act like a volume pot, not a tone pot. So, heat sinks, alligator clips, they look like, and there's little scissor-looking clips that go on, and they have to be on when you solder these. Now, the second tip I'm going to give you is some kind of insulator has got to go along these shafts because they're going to be in a tight compartment, and they're going to have other capacitor legs possibly touching them when you try mashing everything together. So insulate as much of it as possible. Now, when you go out on the opposite leg of the capacitor, right, 
you're going to go to ground. Now, you could go to ground anywhere you want. Now, some of the wiring schematics are going to tell you when you go to ground, you need a 100K resistor across all these legs or a 250K resistor. That's up to you. Your mileage may vary depending on what you're doing on that. So now we've got to this point. We've got all six capacitors wired in. Everything's insulated out. We've got the output wire opposite from the input wire. And it's going to run to an inductor. And this inductor is the tone choke or TC1 tone choke by Ken Armstrong. These are 1.5 Henry's. The original Gibson uh, Veritone inductors were 7.5 Henry's and about this big. Now, what is an inductor? An inductor is something that, that creates uh, the electric field that goes to the amplifier. In our guitars, it's our pickup where we have a pole that's wrapped with copper wire. And as the string vibrates through uh, that magnetic field, it transfers millivolts to our output jack that goes into our amplifier, which amplifies the signal by a thousand or whatever value you choose. So all this is, is an in and an out. So whichever way you do it, from white to red or red to white, you're coming off the second pole, into here, out of here, into the output jack. And that is how you wire that baritone up. Now, I didn't go through all the soldering techniques, but if you have a wattage uh, or heat solder gun, mine, I have a Hayusa. I set it at about 340 and I try not to keep the, the tip of the soldering gun on there more than two seconds. And that's it. That's enough to heat up these little legs and, and get a good seal. And if you pre-tin everything, it, it's just that much easier. So, and pre-tinning is heating up the leg and putting a little bit of solder on there before you try making the connection. We're going to have complete solder instructions later on. Now, let's go into why... Do you need that? And what other things can this tone choke do by itself? Now, if this tone choke is hooked to a point 022 cap like this, and then it's hooked to the number one, and whenever we look at these guys, we look at them like this. We look at them like they're mounted in the guitar and it's lug one, lug two, lug three. So if we have the tone choke running to lug one through the 22 cap here, right? And then we have the opposite side of the tone choke running to ground on this cap, right? And we have the volume coming into the center and we have a second 22 cap on lug three going to ground, what you will get is normal tone control when you go and use this cap. And when you go through the tone choke, it's gonna make it sound like an acoustic guitar. So if you wanna uh, experiment with that, that's uh, kind of a fun little hack. Now, if I just want to come out of the volume and come straight in here and then go to the output jack, all I'm going to do is fatten up my tone. That tone's going to get really thick. And people like that. And if you want to try, it's, it, these aren't expensive items, these tone chokes. You put some double stick tape on it and get it in the cavity. Ken Armstrong has them on his website. And they're a lot of fun to play with. I have two or three in the shop all the time. Now, the other thing we could do, uh, we could do it either with a single pole dual throw switch or we could do it with a tower switch, right? Is we could take our live coming from our volume and wire it into a center lug right there, right? Then we could take a 22 and come out and go into the tone choke 
and then from the tone choke out to the output. Now, if we wire and bridge these two lugs, do you see these two lugs here and here? These two, and go also to intersect to our output jack past the tone choke, we can use this switch and in one way it'll be normal and the other it'll give the guitar an acoustic sound. Now, let's go without the tone choke and let's say we want to experiment with 0 0.033 and 0 0.020. 022. If I wire these on the top and bottom, and what I'm going to do now is do a little drawing of the switch. On the back of this switch, there are six points, right? This is on this tower switch, and it's a Bourne's tower switch, right? 500K. If I wire a point zero two two across this and then go to ground and a point zero three three across this and then go to ground and then bring my live wire in here, right? What I've got now, and this is being used as a tone control, is I've got point zero two two when the switch is closed and 0 0.033 when it's open. And you could do that with any two capacitors you choose, just using one of these. Now I know what somebody's saying, stop typing. You're gonna tell me, but Tom, that's a 500K switch. And I wanna use this with my 250K system of single coils. Simple, easy breezy, Japanesey. Slug this tone pot down with a 250K resistor. Now, you've got a 250K, 500K pot. That's it, it's just that simple. I'm hoping I didn't confuse anybody with any of this. If I did, let me know, I will try to do it um, simpler. Um, as always, I'd like to thank my good friend, Kent Armstrong, who is the maker of the 1.5 Henry Tone Choke, the TC1, and is also uh, my invaluable source for all things guitar wiring. Uh, he is the second generation Dan Armstrong's son. His son is now in the business and his son's children will be in the business. So you're going to have four generations of guys that work with people like Bill Lawrence wiring pickups for their entire life. So it wasn't a hobby, it was a job. But check out Kent's webpage, check out his products. Like I said, uh, I love his stuff. I just put a set of Rory Gallagher pickups that they can't make anymore because somebody bought the rights from the estate for that name, even though Kent wound the originals for him. And to uh, Fender Custom Shop Stratocaster last night, and oh my God, it sounds like the angels sing. So stay tuned. Only half my ideas are any good. You have to decide which half, and uh, hope you're going to have a great weekend. Bye.